one of the things that you're going to notice the first time that you create a survey is even though you've set up a theme and that's using your specific color branding, color scheme and so on, when you look at the, the survey itself, it doesn't necessarily look that great. Yes, it's using those colors, but we'll notice that even though we've got a logo on the survey, it's very, very small in the top right. We've also got the name of the survey or whatever we've put on that survey. Um, and that's actually the same as our logo. So Walker Consulting, that's what's on the logo. I don't want both of those. So we want to do something about that. We also have a very standard font used. Um, we might have a font that the organization uses and maybe that's what we want to put on the survey. But we can't do that in the theme itself. But what we can do is as a section, if I go to that theme in Dynamics 365, so underneath where the preview is, you've got a section for CSS and we've got runtime CSS. So what we can do very simply is we can actually create new uh, code to determine what the, um, the color scheme is going to look like in terms of the fonts, maybe the font sizes, that kind of thing. And we can go ahead and change that. So I'm going to jump back to the survey itself and I'm going to right click on where it says Walker Consulting. Now I use Google Chrome. You can use other browsers. I just find this one's a little bit easier to kind of get to grips with. So I'm going to have it in the menu at the bottom. It's going to say inspect. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what we'll see is a, a new section that will open up. Um, it might open at the bottom. You can have it displayed at the bottom or on the side. And what we can see here is the area we highlighted, it's actually highlighted that in the in the code in that page. And we can see there where it says Walker Consulting. And underneath it does something and shows us what we call the element style. So that title um, is an element of, its, of itself. And what we can see is the size, we can see the font family that's used and so on. What we can see here is the color. Now I don't want to use black, I actually want to make it white so it blends in and we can't actually see it at all. So what I can do is I can click where the black is and I can either use a color picker and you can see as I move around the color of the, the, um, the title is changing. Now I know that the color for white is FFF or six Fs, um, either one will work. So what I could have done is just started typing in FFF instead. OK, so that now has made that white so we can see that. It's, well, we can't see it because we've basically hidden it against the background. So that's the first thing that I want to do. Now, once I've made that change, what I need to do is take that CSS and I need to put that into the theme. So you can see there I've highlighted it. So I can either right click and do copy or do control C on the keyboard. I'm going to go back into my theme and I'm just going to paste that into the theme. So as we make these changes, we're going to keep going back and pasting what the CSS is that we've changed it to. Now, if I close out of this and refresh the browser, it, it hasn't kept that change in there. You're not actually making any changes to the web page directly. What you're doing is making the change and seeing what that change would look like before we actually then apply that to the theme, save it and republish the survey. So it's a great way to be able to see what do we want the the, um, the styling to be and then actually apply it later on once we've figured out exactly because it can be a little bit of trial and error. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of that logo. So I'm going to inspect the logo. We can see there it's, it's um, highlighted it and we can see in here that at the minute it's got a height of 44 pixels. Now I want to make that bigger. So I might do 120 pixels. You can see there it's changed it. What I can also do is rather than just typing is if I use the arrow, which obviously you can't see, but if I'm using that arrow key, either up or down, it's changing the, the, the height, the size of that. So I can make that a lot bigger. Now don't forget, even though it's still on there, we've actually got code that's changing that and making it white and hiding it. So we wouldn't see that any longer. I could also, um, change the where it's see how it's saying float right if i delete that i now have options that i can say actually float left so once we save that that would go ahead and that would put it on the other side so we can change where we want this to um to to be on the page as well if i also untick boxes we can see 
that it puts a line through and basically says, right, I'm not going to use certain elements. So we can really kind of change things around if we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that entire style. I'm going to go back and put that into the CSS. Now what I can do is up here on the feedback requested, I'm going to inspect that. We can see here this section, it's got the font size, so I might want to make that larger. It's also got font weight. Now font weight, if I just delete that and we'll see all the options. If you think about you're using Word or Outlook or something and you're making something bold, then that's usually just all you do is, is use the, the bold option. You don't have any variance on that bold. What this does is this allows to say, okay, well, what, what sort of weighting does that have? So um, you've got 300, which is what it was. If I go to um, 500 or I could make it 600, you can see that that changed it, or I can use bold, bolder, lighter and normal and so on. So I'm going to do bolder. So we can see there that's made it um, stand out a lot more. I could also then change the colour if I wanted to. So I could pick a different colour. And we've also got something called font family. Now font family, um, fonts can uh, depending on somebody's um, own computer, it could be that they can only view certain fonts, so maybe Times New Roman, Arial, that kind of thing. So what this does is it basically says, right, well, we'd like it to be um, Sigoi UI Lite, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and then you've also got a variance of that, that if that's not available, it will show different ones. Now, one of the really cool things that we can do is we've got Google Fonts is something available that is basically a series of web-based fonts that we can select and actually pull directly from Google to say, right, I actually want to display this font instead. So we can see here, there's all of these different fonts. We just go into fonts.google.com and we can scroll through and look at the different fonts that exist. Okay. Now, when we get to a font that we like, so let's say that I like PT Sans. If I hover my mouse, I've got a, a plus here. If I click that, what we're going to see down at the bottom is it will say one family is selected. If I click on that to open it, what I can then do is import this font into my style sheet. Now, it's really, really easy to do this. So if I click on this import, I don't want these two style lines. I just want this one line in the middle. I'm going to select that, copy it, and I'm going to put it right at the very top of the styling. So I'm just going to paste that in and I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, once we've done that, if I go back to the Google fonts, it basically says, OK, this is the rule that you need to use to be able to specify that's the family you want. So we can see there font family, PT sans, sans serif. So if I copy that, I'm going to go back into that um, survey and in here, the font family. I'm going to oh, I'm going to untick that. I don't want to use it. I actually want to add in my own one. So I don't know if you saw that change. You can see now the font is changing at the top for that feedback request. So now we're using that new font. So again, I can go ahead and I can copy that. And then I can paste that at the bottom. OK, so as soon as I save that, it's basically saying modifying the theme is going to affect all related surveys. So essentially any survey using this theme, when you republish those surveys, it will use these changes that we put into the CSS. So that's fine. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back to my survey and just get rid of this and refresh it. So now we can see it's gone back to the original. Finally, to make it that those changes are now visible to everyone, I'm going to go ahead and republish that survey because I basically want to say, right, take all of the changes from the theme and update it. And what they should do, there we go. So we can now see this. Oh, I must have for forgotten to do that one. So I'll go back and change that in a moment. So now we can see there's the logo that's been um, enlarged and there's that change to that font and the font size and the font color. 
So it's really sort of trial and error. Like I said, you can play around, right click on any of those different elements, make the changes in that inline editor tool. Once you are happy with that, go back into your theme, copy and paste it, and that's it. Just don't forget to go ahead and republish that survey after the fact.